Today's episode contains adult language and themes. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Is MAGA over? Yeah, let's talk about that. Focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, happy Friday there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on a board. Another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you live from our Stratus IP studios here in lovely Eastern Indiana. Don't let cyber attacks or outdated business technology put your company at risk. Learn more at briannicholshow.com forward slash Stratus IP. Stratus IP, business technology simplified. Well, folks, uh, it's official. Donald Trump is running for election once again. It's not technically re-election, I guess, because he's not in office anymore, but he's a former president, so technically is re-election. But regardless, yes, he's trying to make America great again, once again. And I guess that's the question. Is MAGA over? Because you look at the results of him announcing and then some uh, polls that went immediately thereafter, and Trump's not leading those polls. It's actually a, a different folk down from the great state of Florida that is one Governor Ron DeSantis to discuss that today. Returning to the program, you know him from Tiger Fitness, IFBB Pro, Mark Lobliner. Welcome back to the program, my friend. Oh, I got a peck pop for that. What's up, brother? How you doing? <laughs> doing good, my man. Uh, hey, sometimes, sometimes you just got to get the heart beating. Yeah, a little bit of myocarditis action going on. You hey, no, me. no, no, no. We, we, we didn't, we didn't go that route here in that. Oh, show. yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I had myocarditis, it would be the right. I, I just, I don't think it would work at all. We, so, <laughs> we, 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 I, I'll tell you what, man, I got so much, so much trouble from, from friends, from family, because from the beginning, I was like, this just doesn't add up. Like, I'm having folks in the show like uh, you, who, like you're, you're a health and ex, like wellness expert. This is what you do every single day. I'd you're say after 20 years, I'll, I'd be, can, I could call myself an expert. Here's the deal. Absolutely. You, you surround yourself with bad people. So not one person gave me any problems, not at all, because my, my own brother, he's one of us, you know, my wife, she agrees with me, my kids based as hell people I surround myself with, even if they got it, they're like, I, I feel you, bro. You do you. The so circle has I, changed a lot. So I, people are like, people are like, bro, like, like didn't everybody give you crap? I'm like, no, because I don't talk to stupid people. Like the problem is everybody's like, well, my family, fuck them. They're your family. Like, let them go. Just because you have some li- some family lineage doesn't mean you have to surround yourself with negative, toxic, stupid people. And anybody who wanted to force anybody to take that stupid, unapproved, now deadly thing, I didn't say it. Hopefully I don't get you banned. Um, th- th- now the people who took it, like, they're the ones like, you know, they're the ones who are like, man, I, I wish I have. I post on Twitter the other day. I'm like, dude, I'm like, how many people kind of like regret it? Dude, there was like hundreds of replies. Like, I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't. And there were so many stories that were just sad. Like, I was healthy. I was training five days a week. Now I can't get out of bed. It was like, oh my goodness. And they're still like, did you hear about Europe and the cancer, the cancer screenings in Europe? I haven't. Uh, Dude, okay, this this just blew me away. This was out in the Guardian. I tweeted this today. Um, it was a hundred million missed cancer screenings. And over a million undiagnosed uh, types of cancer in wow. just Europe alone. That's a report that's coming out right now. And they said that it was, it's <sighs> like leading the doctors to like not know what to do. Um, well, you talk about overcrowding the hospitals. I think they've accomplished that. Yep. Because and also look at RSV cases because we locked down, didn't get any germs and put masks on. So obviously we're going to have problems. Like there's a reason why we don't like God didn't give us this special cover for our face. Naturally. (laughs) You're not supposed to cover your face, bro. Like you're just not supposed to cover your face. There's a reason you exhale is get rid of the bullshit. Okay. If you keep the bullshit on a mask, like you're full of shit, like mask. And I still see people like there were a couple of idiots at our gym this morning. I call them idiots in a very affectionate, non-offensive way wearing masks. I'm like, first of all, you're in Tennessee move. Second of all, (laughs) you look fucking stupid. Like you just look stupid. Like you're the only two people in here. And it's at the point where I'm like, I, I, I'm not even going to make fun of them because like, it's everybody's like internally making fun of them. So yep. it's at least in Tennessee. Wait, did you, see, did you see the article? And it was like, um, I, I wear a mask at the gym. It's the smart thing to do, but why do I feel so stupid? Because you're an idiot. And I just, like I, I honestly said, like, <laughs> Honestly, like I saw the article, I def- I didn't read it because oh. because I have more self respect than to read that. 
And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, if you're the only one in it, you're probably the idiot. Now, I can say the same thing for me being the only one without a mask during the lockdowns. But then again, you know, history kind of showed that I was not only correct, but they were so wrong. But they're still doubling down. And I don't even think a lot of these people, like, I see conservatives doing it too. I think that the group think on both sides, some people are just so, they're still, they were so whipped into a scared frenzy during the pandemic that they've yet to let it go. They're still scared to take this thing off their face. It's like their binky, their security blanket. And honestly, I have no, I have, I have absolutely no, um, I have no respect for these people. I just don't because I don't respect idiots. I, I, I'm just nodding in agreement because you don't have to agree. It's going to get you in trouble. I don't Well, care. no, no, but well, this is, this is frankly <laughs> like something. And, and I, I've been talking about this in the show for a number of, of years now. And really it, it came to a head over the past year where my immediate circle has drastically changed. And because namely the response to a lot of the folks that I originally looked at as like rational, yeah. logical human beings, and then realized that no, all it took was propaganda from the government just in like just constant bombardment to just flip them. It, it, and that's all it took. And then we talk about this in sales and I'm teaching my sales team. Once you see something, you can't unsee it. Right. So we all yes. like, help the prospect, make it see it. So in this world, I saw it and I can't unsee it. So, I mean, with that, I, I mean, we were talking about this before we hit record. Like that's partly why I jettisoned from Philadelphia out to Indiana, because frankly, Smart. I was tired of surrounding myself with by and large, a number of folks who, don't like me, right? Like actively hate me, vote, uh, not just vote against me, but would vote to use government to actively cause harm on me. And that's the difference I think is that like mm -hmm. I moved because I realized my, like my circumstances required change. And, and yes. I moved that is me voting with my feet. I like physically and, and surrounding myself with not just like different people. I think I, I hate that people are like, Oh, you're going to go surround yourself and get into an echo chamber. It's like, no, no, no. Yes. I like well, my echo chamber, but at I least, you it. know, like it's, it's, it's a good, okay. Let's just say it's an echo chamber. It's based on values and morals yes. and like shared goals, common themes and, and interests. Like that's important. And, and people who pretend it's not, I don't know what they're playing, like what game they're playing, but Bro. it's a losing game. Remember the remember the saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do? I'm just not going to go to Rome. Fuck the Romans. It's a fallen empire. I don't want to be there. Look, at the end of the day, you want to know why the, the, the results of the election. Now, Republicans won bigly. Yep. They won. They won an entire house. Yep. Like, that's house. huge. One and, of the biggest yet, ones. Which is weird because Democrats are celebrating and Republicans are mad. And I'm like, is everybody stupid? Or am I stupid? Because it seems like this is an epic win for Republicans. And you know me, I'm, I'm more of an independent, I, but I don't vote Democrat. So I guess I, I, right now I am a Republican until Libertarian Party can step it up. But I'm looking at this. Okay, we won. But the reason, the reason it wasn't a red wave is because there's no more red left. All the red, if you take the people who led, there was a number, I think it was like, 10, it was some crazy number left New York and then Zeldin lost by half the votes yep. of the people. So I think it was like, let's say 10,000 left and he lost by 5,000 votes. I know that's not accurate, but that's like the ratio. Yep. So if those people would have stayed, those were mostly conservatives. And I say that because they probably live in my neighborhood. We have more New Yorkers, Californians and Illinoisans than, than we do Tennesseans. Like there's no fucking people from Tennessee because everybody left. So Michigan's the same way. Everybody was like, I'm out. Peace. I mean, look at you, right? Like you're out yep. me. I moved in 2019, but I would have moved. I'd be out from, from Illinois. Where were you beforehand? I was in Illinois. Okay. A horrible, horrible place, man. I I'd imagine that people say go to hell. And I'm like, number one, Jews don't believe in hell. Number two, it can't be as bad as Illinois. <laughs> it's, it's, it can't, I mean, at least hell's warm. Uh, I was on the interstate. Was it nine? Is it ninety seven? Whatever the one goes right up there next to Chicago. I ninety. Oh my God! Just no, thank you. The, it was nah. like six minutes traffic. No, nah, I mean if people are mad because they're cold, they probably want to be in their car because there's heat. Valid. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But you're talking about MAGA. I heard you talking about MAGA. Is yeah, MAGA yeah. Dead? Well, and and I might, so this kind of goes into 
you, you, you hinted at it, right? Like it wasn't necessarily a loss. And, and I think we have to recalibrate a little bit too, because you have seen this. And I think now we can reframe from where we were at the end of the election night. A lot of folks were just like absolutely gutted. Cause I think you were expecting when the, the first poll started to close, like Kentucky Rand Paul just sweeps his opponent. But, but Florida. Rand Paul gangster though. A hundred percent. But then guy. Florida, right. And a hundred percent gangster in, in DeSantis, Sweeps Florida and just absolutely yeah. crushes. So and, I think and don't forget it. Kemp. Say it again. Don't forget Kemp destroying Stacey Abrams. Not 100%. even a contest this time. She officially then, lost. Yeah, and then and then you have um, Texas going yep. Abbott by a landslide. So why? So again, what happened during the lockdowns? Yep. People moved to Georgia, Florida, and Texas. And re Democrats weren't fleeing it because Democrats are like sadomasochists, man. They like the boot across the throat. They like to be told what to do. Like, they have a ball gag in their mouth at all times. Like, give it to me harder, daddy. Like, lock me down. I don't want to leave my house. Oh, yes, deliver the Uber. And then they get fatter and fatter and fatter. You ever remember when Democrats were the hot people? Like, I remember it's like, dude, Democrat chicks were hot. Now it's like, you got like... You got like, dude, conservatives. I got a, I got a lot Tulsi in there now. I love Tulsi. She likes all my Instagram posts, and I'm gonna say this respectful about her because I love her as. A, but I, I've always liked, even when she was a Democrat, I liked her because I thought she, I thought she spoke based on her what she thought was best for the country. I don't give a crap if you're left, right, middle, libertarian. Don't care if you are actually legit and giving your opinion and living by the sword. I'm a fan, but Tulsi. Uh, so just immensely attractive. You got the the pundits like Tommy Lauren, like uh, she's hot as hell. Like since when did conservatives become the party of the hot chicks? And that's why I am officially a conservative now. We got all the hot chicks, man. Like I'm I'm with it. Like so these women are, dude. I was at Blaze headquarters a couple a month ago, and everybody's hot. <laughs> everybody's hot. I'm like, this is great. Like, am I at a nightclub or am I at a conservative news network? It's like watching Fox News. Dude, Fox is Fox. Like, they're literally foxes. Like, that was an old word back in my day for hot chicks. And hot chicks will always mean hot chicks. Hot chicks. It's just how you roll. <laughs> we, we just took a Joe Rogan turn here at the show. This doesn't happen that often, which I like. Um, I have ADHD, bro. It's going to be all over the place. Oh, good. Today. No, no. Well, let's go back to, back to MAGA, oh, yeah. right? And oh, it goes to the result of the election night where I think people were upset. And now you look to, well, now you, you have something to look for. You, you won the house. Um, so I guess the question goes to what is the future for MAGA? Because Trump's, <laughs> he's officially announced he's running again. Yeah. And, and he's, he doesn't seem to have that it. I, I, I can't, I don't know what, how to like... So, do you, mean he's words, boring, you know? mean he's boring or people don't like him anymore? Because yes, I know exactly. Okay, so he's boring. Both. So I, I think that I think that his advisors told him to tone it down. I think he wants to present himself as less of a loose cannon. And I think that's actually good for a lot of people. Not like me. I mean, I'm a loose cannon, so I appreciate that. And I never really liked Trump anyway. Um, but I'll vote for him against a Democrat nine times out of nine. You know what I mean? Like there's no chance. But I actually think it doesn't matter if we run Trump or we run a sweet potato because all it comes down to is who can harvest the most ballots. And the Republicans, hopefully they got the memo that it doesn't matter how many votes you get. It's how many votes are counted. So we just need to go out as a and I say we as non-Democrats. I don't care which party does. it. I don't give a fuck if the Green Party does it. I'll vote on that line. Just somebody needs to go out. And do what they did to get Fetterman in and do what they get, did to get Hobbs. Well, that might be a runoff, but you know what I mean? Like, it's all about the mail in, it's all about the harvesting, it's all about all that stuff. But it has nothing to do with the candidate. They literally put a potato in office in Pennsylvania. I still don't know how that, like, I mean, how? what the fuck's that thing on his neck? Like, there's a lot of things going on there. I can't unpackage it. So, I'm looking at this like it doesn't matter if it's Trump, DeSantis. It doesn't matter if it's Pee Wee Herman. It doesn't matter. You just need to be able to get more votes. And that has nothing to do with because people who hate Democrats are going to vote for Republicans. Democrats will vote Democrat. Independents, whatever. 
it's all about collecting votes. It's all about harvesting the votes. That's it. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter anymore who's the right candidate. We've shown that across the damn country. Look at who's winning. It's not the best candidates. It's who the Democrats harvest votes for. They figured it. They literally created the game during 2020 and they executed it. It's going to take a whole election cycle for these fossil dumbass Republicans to figure it out. So how do we fix it? Harvest ballots. I mean, all we could do. So on, on a state level, Tennessee, Florida, Texas, all states with very clear voter ID laws, very clear anti-ballot harvesting laws. And guess what? Those states all went Republican, right? Uh -huh. Florida, fair voting. They fixed the system. These states that have like Arizona, like Oregon, like California, that have the mail-in voting and the opportunity to commit, I'm not going to say fraud, have the opportunity to gather votes from votes that would have not been gathered and curing ballots and all this stuff. Dude, we're not going to fix the blue states because it would take them literally killing the system that got them elected. And literally in Arizona, you had Katie Hobbs in charge of counting votes in the most corrupt county How in the country for that, counting geez. votes. That's a conflict of interest. So, yeah. so the only thing you could do, if you can't beat them, join them. It's not cheating if everybody does it. Like everybody's like, oh, in the 90s, the home run records don't count because they were on steroids. Everybody was on steroids in the 90s. They were legal. So it's the same thing. Like it's legal. It's within the realm of legality. So if the Republicans ever want to win again, they have to play that game, period. They need to put drop boxes at churches, at gun stores, at, at um, anywhere that there's a large concentration of Republicans. We talk about, so yesterday I had Maj Tor in the show. Um, and guy. you're talking about, great guy, yeah. And talk about building a culture of liberty, right? And I know that there's a, a big movement to reach folks who just haven't been involved in the political process in the past. Yeah. And I guess when you look at the Republican Party, what is the GOP culture? It Does it have a culture or is it just standing against the left? There's two. So there's the establishment GOP, which does not care about majority or minority. They just want their power and their piece of the pie. They want some of that laundered money from Ukraine. I said it. I mean, that's McConnell. Um, you know, explain what's that, by the McCarthy. way, because we didn't really talk about the FTX thing really quick. Can you just explain how that all took place? Well, FTX, from what I, from my understanding, was a crypto kind of holding yep. kind of fund. And they literally just lost $11 billion. Like, it, it's such a weird situation where... A lot of people will go belly up, but the guy who runs it donated literally hundreds of millions of dollars to Democrat Party. So FTX became a funding arm of the Democrat Party, plus FTX was also involved with Ukraine. We have sent literally more money this year to the Ukraine than Russia's entire military budget. Now, wait, isn't the rumor also true that the Ukraine was also investing in FTX? Yes. Um, that's what I, I, I read. Mean, and I'm not an expert on this. I read up on it this morning. At the end of the day, man, it's so you're, you're, you're obviously liberties and you're, you're, you're obviously a constitutionalist, a constructionist like I am. The government was not meant to have career politicians. It was Absolutely. meant to have people no. come in, serve their time, and then go back to making shit happen. It was meant yep. to have the best of the best in the private sector. And un unfortunately, instead, we got the worst of the worst career politicians who go into politics because how do you explain Joe Biden being worth hundreds of millions of dollars after making 200 grand a year for his entire life in Senate? 200 grand a year is good money, but it's not fuck you money. No. Like, you know, I make good money. Um, but I make more than much more than Joe Biden made, and he has much more shit than I do. So I know he's like two times my age, which is sad because I'm 42 next week. But the fact the president is almost double my age and I'm not by any means young, that's scary. But yeah, I mean, dude, these guys are on the take. They're all on the take. And you have some fighters. You got Marjorie Taylor Greene. You got Rand Paul. You got Thomas Massey. 
And they're, they're the only hope we have are candidates like that. Now you got, I believe that JD Vance guy in Ohio is promising to hear. And unfortunately, or fortunately, a lot of them are America first. Now you asked about which candidate, which, which, what is the GOP? There's two factions. There's the one I just described the establishment who just wants their piece of the pie. And then there's America first. Now I don't know where Trump stands on it. Um, I don't care, but it seems like the America first people are the ones throwing up the flag. Marjorie Taylor Greene was screaming all day about getting some accountability for Ukraine. Rand Paul put a bill that was, by the way, squashed by both Republicans on Democrat to audit the money that's gone to the Ukraine. Here's my question. Why is everybody, they're all for hiring 87,000 IRS agents to audit individuals, yet nobody wants to audit elections and nobody wants to audit the Ukraine. How come they're auditing a guy who makes 70 grand a year just scraping by to put his family, um, put food on their table, yet I want to audit $91 billion going to a country I don't give a fuck about. I care about people. I care that people are healthy and safe. But honestly, like, why don't we worry about our fentanyl overdoses over here. Why don't we worry about the dozens of young black children senselessly murdered in Chicago every fucking week? No, instead we're sending it to some fucking white people in Ukraine. It's racist as fuck. Why don't we care about black and brown people who die in the streets, huh? It's just like the old adage, man. You get a white kid kidnapped back in the 90s, it was on every news channel. Uh, you never saw a hunt for a kid. You said black kids don't get kidnapped? No, better optics. They're helping these, oh, these poor, beautiful fucking OnlyFans girl in the Ukraine. Now, they are hot. And I just want to make this offer publicly. Any um, in need, hot OnlyFans girls in Ukraine, I will let you have, you know, I'll let you have um, a house. <laughs> I'll give you amnesty. You come live at my house. I'll just play it. But, I mean, these chicks are ridiculously hot, by the way. Ukrainian chicks and Russian chicks, they're hot. And that's why I think that's why I'm conflicted. Like, I think we need to figure out if Russia or Ukraine has hotter chicks. Once we figure that out, we figure out who we're going to back. This feels dangerously close to Robert California at the end of the office. <laughs> Going out and teaching the uh, the illiterate uh, was it illiterate Eastern European gymnastic uh, women uh, who, who they are just they are in need of such uh, coaching. Uh, Look, so man, I'm about altruism. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what Mark, I do. Mark, we could go on and on, man, but uh, unfortunately, we we're already hard-pressed for time. So here's what I want to do. I want, first and foremost, to give folks a chance to, to continue the conversation with you. You're a great follower over on Twitter, so I see you have your Twitter handle there, at Mark Lobliner. But yeah. you also have a lot of stuff you're doing over at Tiger Fitness. I know you also have a new workout program. I think I saw that you just launched as well. A new, uh, is it new uh, e no, like that? It's so, so I don't charge for books. I charge for oh, tangible goods. Okay. So it's powerlifting for bodybuilders. It's, it's yeah. a bit of an advanced program. I have less advanced programs. I have... I've written so many free books. Um, it's I love doing it. It's how I kind of decompress and put my thoughts on paper. I, I like writing things. So that's that. Um, TigerFitness.com. We also, I think that's a good time. We're going to have a huge Black Friday sale nice. um, coming up, obviously. Black Friday, which is going to be really dope. It's our biggest sale of the year. Obviously, it's everybody's biggest sale of the year. And yeah, TigerFitness.com. We got the Outright Bar. We got a lot of cool stuff. And what do I have here? And this is, a, this is a great, if you have trouble losing weight, there's a great appetite suppressant called No Morbidity. Hmm. So we have that. That's my other brand, Ambrosia. So we got it going on. And if I offended anybody, uh, I'm not apologizing. <laughs> Mark, that's why we love having you in the show. You always keep <laughs> your mind. And uh, folks, if you enjoyed today's episode, you enjoyed hearing Mark speak his mind. Well, do me a favor. First of all, please go ahead and give today's episode a share. When you do, Please tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. Give Mark a tag at Mark Lobliner. And also, we'll make sure I know 90% of you are joining us here on the audio version of the show. Hello. Uh, but if you are joining us there and you're driving, working out, whatever it may be, no worries. Just go to your show notes, click the artwork. It'll bring you over to BrianNicholsShow.com where you can find today's episode, the entire transcript from today's episode, plus all of the affirmation uh, show notes plus the link to Tiger Fitness and their Black Friday specials, which I am definitely taking part in. Then my protein powder and creatine is low. Absolutely. Um, and then beyond that, <laughs> folks, uh, if you did not get the chance, I know I mentioned the episode earlier, we had Mark, or, or sorry, we had Mosh Tori, rather, on the program yesterday. Uh, oh, so he's, one of our, he's an Ambrosia guy, too. He's is one he? of our guys. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah hey, we, 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 uh, we sponsor and send bars and everything to Black Guns Matter. 
Awesome. Yeah, so that's what we talked about, building a culture of liberty. Black guns matter. And uh, by the way, I'll make sure I can make it easy for you to find. If uh, you're looking for that video, you're like, where the heck can I find it? Right here below. Um, and it, by the way, we're on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey. So wherever it is you're watching the show, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and little notification bell. All right, Mark, final thoughts for the uh, audience. What do you got for us? Oh man, just be optimistic. You know, it's, it's, I, I, I think we're in a very good spot, whether you're Republican or Democrat. I don't think anybody can make the argument that it's better to have um, complete control by one party. So I like the fact that at least it's somewhat balanced to control some of the stupid ideas coming forth by either party. But unfortunately, both of them like dumping money into Ukraine. So we're kind of screwed there, guys. <laughs> My final thoughts, folks. Uh, shows like this, uh, unfortunately, they are mostly a labor of love. So if you enjoy stuff like this every single week, I mean, here at the show, we're doing five episodes a week, Mark. Did you know that? Monday through Friday. So Damn. if you guys get some value, that's right. Please do us a favor, support the program. There's a couple of ways you can do that. Number one, head to briannicholshow.com forward slash shop. We have a lot of new merch, including our magic money tree shirt. And that's right. The magic money tree, our magical unicorn and leprechauns. Grab that. Plus our what happened in 1971 shirt. Now that's what I call tyranny Klaus Schwab shirt and more over at briannicholshow.com forward slash shop and use code TBNS at checkout for a discount applied to your order. That's one way. Number two, head to briannicholshow.com forward slash support, make a one-time donation, or become a uh, returning and recurring uh, a support of the show, $5 a month. Whatever you can do, everything goes right back here into the program. Folks, thank you for joining us. We had a great week of guests. And with that being said, it's Brian Nichols signing off here on The Brian Nichols Show for Mark Loebliner. We'll see you next week. You're listening to The Brian Nichols Show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.